Okay, here is your learning target three and learning target four videos. Learning target three is interpret statements that use function notation in terms of a real world context. Um, learning target four is determine an appropriate domain and range in terms of a real world context. Okay, um, so this first example, here's a, an example of a function. Um, this function f of x equals nine over five x plus 32. Um, this calculates the temperature in degrees Fahrenheit. So f of x represents degrees Fahrenheit for any given temperature x in degrees Celsius. Um, so our example problem asks us to find um, f of 15, which is some, f of 15 is kind of some um, terminology or, or way of saying functions that we learned about in the previous couple learning targets. Um, so if we want to know f of 15, what this is really asking us is uh, what is the function, or, or cal calculate this function, f of x, um, for x equals 15. In terms of the context, context of the problem, um, this means what is the temperature in degrees Fahrenheit for x equal to 15. So when it is 15 degrees Celsius, um, how, what temperature is it in Fahrenheit? And this function will convert that for us. So what we'll actually have to do is f of 15 equals 9 over 5 times 15 plus 32. Okay, and then we'll go, go through and calculate that. So f of 15 equals 9 over 5 times 15, that's just 9 times 3 plus 32. That gives us 27 plus 32, and f of 15 equals 59. So what this means in terms of the problem, again, is when the Celsius degrees equals 15, Fahrenheit equals 59 degrees. Okay. The next one asks for F of negative 10. In other words, what is the temperature in degrees Fahrenheit when the temperature outside is negative 10 Celsius? So similar type of setup for this. F of negative 10 equals 9 over 5 times negative 10 plus 32. This just gives us 9 times negative 2 plus 32, which equals negative 18 plus 32, which equals 14. Okay. So when it is negative 10 degrees Celsius, that is the same as 14 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, that's what that means in terms of the problem. This next one then asks for x when f of x equals 41. So what this means is um, if this whole thing, this whole f of x equals 41, now we need to, now we need to find what degrees Celsius will give us a 41 Fahrenheit. Okay, so now you're just solving, um, solving equations for x. We've done this in previous units, so this shouldn't be a, a foreign concept to us. But now we're just solving for x um, in degrees Celsius. And again, there's oops, that should be nine. Again, there's a lot of different ways to to solve this. Um, whichever way works best for you should get uh, five degrees Celsius. So five degrees Celsius equates to forty one degrees Fahrenheit. And the last one, a uh, similar type of problem, find x when f of x equals negative four. So negative four equals. 9 fifths x plus 32. Again, solve it. 
and you will get x equals negative 20. Okay, so when it's negative 4 degrees uh, Fahrenheit, that equates to negative 20 Celsius. Okay, the second part of this is um, oftentimes you'll be asked to uh, determine like the domain and the range um, of a certain function or functions. Here we are asked to, to determine the, the domain and range um, from this graph. You can also do it from tables, um, but we're going to do it from this graph. So um, just a friendly reminder, if you have heard the terms domain and range before but don't remember what they mean, um, domain refers to the x values. Okay, what, what is the, the spread of x values? Um, and, and range refers to the spread of y values. Okay, so for this first example, example A, um, we have our lowest x value looks like our lowest x value is negative 5. And our highest x value is 5. So we say the domain is from negative 5 to 5. Um, similarly, if we look at the range, that refers to the y values. So we'll look at what's the lowest y value, looks like 0. And what is the greatest y value, which looks like 5. So our range is from 0 to 5. Okay, we'll do similarly for example B. Looks like our domain Our domain is from x equals 0 to x equals 360. Okay, so we're just looking at the minimum x value and the maximum x value. Our range then, um, the y values go from down here at negative 1. It lo looks like our maximum here is at 1. So we range from negative 1 to 1. The last example, example C, um, th this line extends, okay? So uh, theoretically, um, this goes on forever. So like if you could extend this graph way, way over here, you would, see, you would continue to see this line just going up and up and up. So for the domain, we would say all numbers are all real numbers or all x any value of x something like that because this extends in all directions again we can only see really that it goes to maybe negative 13 or so and positive 12 but since it has these arrows it extends infinitely in each direction in each direction. So that's why we say the domain is all numbers or all x. Similar for the y. Okay, It's going to extend and keep going up, keep going down. So we'll say all y or all numbers, infinite y, something like that. Okay. Um, next we're going to talk about kind of how um, the domain fits into a real world situation. So if we go back to our previous example of converting between Fahrenheit and Celsius. Um, we have to think about this real world problem realistically. Okay, Obviously you're not going to have something that's, um, you know, if f of x is degrees Fahrenheit, you're not going to have something that's 3 million degrees Fahrenheit or negative 5 billion degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, So if we think about this realistically, um, we have to think about what an appropriate domain and range would be. Um, so I would say that, you know, think somewhat realistically. If we're talking about, you know, temperature outside, um, you know, the weather can get a little bit crazy, but it's, it's usually never be below about, you know, 40 degrees Fahrenheit, and I would say that's even pretty low. Um, it's usually never above about 120, and again, that's that's pretty high. So I'm being kind of generous with my domain or with my range. 
But this is my range, okay? Because remember, f of x is degrees Fahrenheit. So f of x is, um, is our range. x will be our domain then. So this is in degrees Fahrenheit. Our domain is going to be in degrees Celsius because that is what x is. And x refers to our, or our domain refers to x. So again, it's going to be pretty similar. Um, Celsius it tends to be a little bit higher, so I would maybe say like negative 10 degrees Celsius to, I don't know, um, probably 110 degrees Celsius. But again, it's, it's kind of up for interpretation. You sort of have to look at what's the situation, what's appropriate realistically um, in terms of the problem. Again, you're usually not going to have a temperature outside much above 120 degrees Fahrenheit or below negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's kind of up for interpretation in that way. Um, before class, um, I would like you to please define a domain and range for the following functions. So think realistically. Um, your independent variable it would be your hours spent studying. Okay, that would be x. The score earned on the test, that would be y, the dependent variable. Think about realistically what's a, what's a good range of values for the domain x for hours spent studying. Similarly over here, number of t-shirts sold, that would be your x, your, uh, your independent variable. y would be your dependent variable. So think about realistically um, the number of shirts that you might expect to sell and the profit you might expect to make for this type of situation. Okay, so go ahead and do those for tomorrow.